Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to Colorado Christian University's commencement ceremony. As you enter the worship center, please move to the middle of the row and do not leave any empty seats between your family and the guests next to you. If you have any questions today or have an emergency, please speak to one of our CCU staff members wearing a CCU lanyard and a silver name tag. Thank you.
This is your classroom, where you start the journey to a better life. For not only yourself, but those around you. Sparking dreams from where you are to where life tells you to be, to where you want to be. Finding inspiration on your own terms. Spurred toward a brighter future. Life doesn't have to stop when you go back to school. We are Colorado Christian University, and this is your classroom. Ladies and gentlemen, throughout the conferring of degrees, professional photographers will be taking photos of all the graduates. 
Due to safety regulations, please remain in your seat and do not block the aisles to take photos. Information for ordering photos can be found at the end of your program. A very important announcement. Following the ceremony, we ask that all guests remain in their seats until all of the graduates have left the worship center. We hope you have a wonderful celebration today with your graduates. Again, we ask that all guests remain in their seats until all graduates have left the worship center. If you have any questions today or have an emergency, please speak to one of our CCU staff members wearing a CCU lanyard and a silver name tag. Thank you. There is light.
Ladies and gentlemen, our ceremony will begin in approximately five minutes. Please take your seats. One final announcement before the graduates enter the worship center. In the event of an emergency, please leave the building. There is light. Because in the beginning, there was nothing. And now, a light fills the void. And vanquishes the darkness. Boundless in its reach. Warming the corners of existence. And with it, life, beauty, and hope, steadfast and sure. There is light. And here, we live our lives by it, guiding what we do, day in, day out. A light of knowledge and truth that transforms students' lives and burns inside them. Where students are challenged and empowered to carry Christ's light into the world as leaders blazing a path forward for others to follow. A light that we must keep burning to shine the way for generations to come. The Lantern of the Rockies, where students can shine their brightest and become whom God has called them to be. Professionals who will change hearts, change cultures, change nations. And we will know when night falls, there is hope. Because where there is darkness in the world, there is light. Ladies and gentlemen, our ceremony will begin in approximately five minutes. Please take your seats. One final announcement before the graduates enter the worship center. In the event of an emergency, please leave the building through the closest exit. CCU staff members will assist you. Please leave quickly and quietly so that you may hear important instructions. Once the situation has been resolved, we will let you know that it is safe to re-enter the building. Our goal will be to finish commencement. Again, in the event of an emergency, please leave the building quickly and quietly through the closest exit. We will begin our ceremony in just a few minutes.
Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2023 commencement ceremony for Colorado Christian University. The ceremony this afternoon begins with the academic procession led by the marshals, Mrs. Sharon Felker and Dr. Neil Anderson. I invite you to take your seats as the degree candidates, the university faculty, and the platform party prepare to enter the worship center. Candidates will enter along the two main aisles. auditorium. On the left are candidates from the CCU Academy, led by outstanding student Anna Orstrom Sangren. And now entering on the right are candidates from the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. And now entering on the left are candidates from the School of Business and Leadership, led by outstanding senior Kimberly Santaguida. Entering on the right are candidates from the School of Music, led by outstanding senior Kristen Lester.
Now entering on the right are candidates from the School of Nursing and Health Professions, led by outstanding senior Chen Yu Lin. Entering on the left are candidates from the School of Education, led by outstanding senior Alex Rockensock. And now entering on the right are candidates from the School of Science and Engineering, led by the outstanding senior Sierra Rose. Entering on the left are candidates from the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, led by the outstanding senior, Hannah Hare. And also now entering on the right are candidates from the School of Theology, led by the outstanding senior, Brendan Bollinger. Now entering the worship center are the esteemed members of the university faculty, led by faculty marshals Dr. Bill Saxby and Tammy Bolchi of the College of Undergraduate Studies. Following the faculty are members of the Platform Party. The Platform Party includes members of the Board of Trustees and the University Council, members of the President's Cabinet, the Academic Vice President, Dr. Janet Black, the Chancellor, Dr. Donald Sweeting, and the President of Colorado Christian University, Mr. Tim McTavish.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Remove your hats as we join the CCU University Choir and Symphonic Band in singing our national anthem. Members of the class of 2023, families of our graduates, honored guests, friends of CCU, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 109th commencement ceremony. I am Tim McTavish, and it is my joy to serve as the interim president of Colorado Christian University. And on behalf of the trustees, faculty, and staff, it is my honor to welcome you to CCU's 2023 commencement ceremony. It's my privilege to be the first to congratulate those whose dreams are coming true, our graduates. As a university, we have an enduring commitment to Christ and his kingdom. CCU exists to prepare and train leaders who will build the church, engage the culture, shape this nation, and serve Christ all over the world and in all kinds of callings. This is why commencement is so important. We are commencing on what God has next for us. It is a time when we join with our graduates and their families and friends to celebrate the achievements of our students and to pray for his blessing in the future. I would like to take this time to thank our Colorado Christian University Board of Trustees now shown on your screen. Our Board of Trustees consists of professionals with great vision and a solid commitment to Christian higher education. Some of our board members are able to be with us today. If you are here with us, would you please stand? We would like to honor you. Thank you. I would also like to recognize the President's Cabinet now also shown on your screen. These nine gifted leaders are dedicated to the Lord's work at CCU and this assist me with the day-to-day -day operations of the university. To our faculty, staff, and deans, totaling more than 600 full-time servants of Christ, thank you for your extraordinary work on behalf of these graduates. Without your dedication, none of this would be possible. In particular, I would like to thank our faculty. You are the heart of this university. Your love for your academic field and your students makes a world of difference. Thank you for sharing your expertise and pouring yourself into your classes. Thank you for helping our students to learn to think, to write, to speak, and to serve effectively. But most of all, today we seek to honor the one without whom CCU would not exist, the one who is the light of the world, the way, 
the truth, and the life, the one who has redeemed us, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be all glory and honor now and forever. Can we give a round of applause to our Savior, Jesus Christ? As we continue with our commencement ceremony this morning, will you please bow your head with me in prayer as we commit our ceremony to the Lord. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. Sovereign Lord, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer, this afternoon we offer to you our highest praise for all that you've done to bring us to this place. We are gathered today to commemorate one of the most significant achievements in the lives of our students. Yet underneath it all, we acknowledge that you have made this possible. Your goodness has opened the doors. Your grace has carried us to this point. Today, we also thank you for all the hard work that has gone into this achievement, the dedication of our teachers and staff, the tenacity of our students, and the people around us who put up with us, encouraged us, and who were pillars in our lives as we pursued this dream. Thank you for all of your good gifts, Father. With David, we say, Who am I, O Lord, and what is my life that you have brought me this far? Most of all, at the outset of this ceremony, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the eternal incarnate Word, who came to our world to die on a cross, and through his glorious resurrection, offer us eternal life. Thank you for the light which he has shined on our path. Help our graduates to walk in that light and to live for his glory for the rest of their days. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Men, you may replace your hats. Each year, the university invites a representative of the graduating class to address our faculty and staff, our fellow graduates, and our honored guests. One student has been chosen to speak this year from the College of Undergraduate Studies. Our senior speaker, Peter Schleicher, was selected on the basis of his outstanding Christian character, his academic attainments, and his leadership at Colorado Christian University. Peter Schleicher from Independence, Minnesota, is graduating with degrees in psychology and strategic communication from the School of Business and Leadership and the School of um, Humanities and Social Sciences. Um, Peter, I'd like to invite you to the podium at this moment. Good afternoon. Friends, family, esteemed faculty and staff, thank you for the privilege of speaking at the 2023 Colorado Christian University commencement ceremony. Before I give my remarks, I would like to acknowledge a few people that have made it possible for me to stand here today. First, Thank you to Dr. Janet Black, the Vice President of Academic Affairs. I appreciate the interview process and this privilege. Secondly, thank you to the School of Business and Leadership for pounding into my head that we are caring, cautious, competent cougars of character that are now destined to be consistent witnesses in the workplace. From the Office of Student Life, Thank you to Sarah Ripito, Melissa Wilkins, Alex Sanjari, and Carrie Beanert for the ways that you have formed me personally into the leader that I am today. And finally, but certainly not least, in Federalist 54, James Madison writes, men are not angels. And I agree with him for the most part, but James Madison never met my mother. And so mom, <laughs> thank you for your love, care, and encouragement that you have given me over the years. I do not deserve it, and I know that I don't say this enough, because I don't think it can ever be said enough, but I love you. Thank you. (laughs) 
Without further ado, today we celebrate not only the completion of college, but more importantly, the start of a new journey that is called adulthood. I think the 2000s punk pop band put it best, Semisonic, when they said, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Adolescence is now quickly fading, but young adulthood is on the horizon. I hope you see today not only as closing time, but as a fresh start. I'd like to share a story fitting of a 1950s sitcom title, but I don't have much time, so I'll keep it short and sweet, two characteristics that I'm well acquainted with. Mid-November 2018, my parents and I had just traveled from our home in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to the Mile High City for the adoption of my first niece, Maya. My sister Erica and her husband Tyler had been fostering Maya since she was merely six days old and now had the opportunity to bring her fully into our family on National Adoption Day nonetheless. Prior to the trip, my dad had planted the seed of visiting colleges while in the Denver area. I instantly began to think about all the possibilities of going to school in Colorado. I could live close to my sister, spring break in California, tailgate at football games, well, <laughs> skip class to go skiing, not that anybody here has done that. <laughs> But not once did I have the thought of attending a small Christian school, and it never crossed my mind. So when my dad asked if I wanted to tour CCU, I quickly replied that such a reservation would be unnecessary. You can ask Dr. King and Dr. Beeson, my moot court coaches. I'm pretty stubborn. I mean, I'm pretty strong-willed. <laughs> and I knew that I did not want to go to CCU, so why should I sacrifice a morning of sleeping in to take this tour? Well, I guess given the fact that we're all gathered here today shows you who won that battle. <laughs> I quickly found out that asking if I wanted to go was merely a courtesy. And it was about... <laughs> it was about as courteous as those used car warranty expiration calls that we all appreciate so much. <laughs> so we took the tour, and throughout the day, God softened my heart towards attending CCU. Now. This is a story that I've heard in many versions from students and my classmates all across campus. CCU may not have been the first choice, but after being on campus and feeling the emotion in a Pastor Dave prayer, you knew that you belonged here. And now, after four years of learning about how Google is successful because of its kingdom model in Professor Miller's class, and listening to way more Canadian punk rock than you ever knew you needed before Dr. Clary's class, <laughs> you have finally made it through. But do not forget those humble beginnings. So, Dad, for making me come and tour CCU, I want to take this moment to say thank you for knowing me better than I knew myself and always pushing me to pursue excellence. Words cannot describe how much I appreciate it. And that sitcom that I referenced earlier is, of course, Father Knows Best. <laughs> Sometimes we think we know what we want, and many times we're wrong. Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, in preparing for battle, I have come to find that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. So, as you think about what comes next, college ending, plan, and plan well, but in the heat of battle, when the chaos is swirling around you, hold those plans loosely. Trust your intuition, trust the education that you have gotten from this institution, and most importantly, trust the Spirit of God and follow where he wants to lead you. Thank you.
The university takes great pleasure in honoring all of its graduates, in particular in recognizing those students who have excelled in their academic programs. A number of bachelor degree students have earned honor cords representing university honors, cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude achievements. Additionally, other candidates have been given military cords for their, ser their service in our armed forces, while additional candidates have earned honor distinctions as part of one or more of our national honor societies represented on our campus. Explanations of all these honor categories and the cords representing them can be found in the program on page 27. A copy of the program is also available on our commencement page, ccu.edu. One student from the College of Undergraduate Studies has achieved, achieved the highest grade point average of the class of 2023 and has been named this year's valedictorian. Jensen Levo maintained the highest grade point average in the College of Undergraduate Studies while participating on the CCU women's soccer team all four years and studying pre-physical therapy. Jensen is one of the authors in a research study that received publication in the Journal of Sports Medicine and Physical Fitness. Her future plans include working toward a doctorate of physical therapy. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me congratulate Jensen Levo. Each year, the faculty in the schools of the College of Undergraduate Studies selects one student to be honored as their school's outstanding senior. Based on the criteria of their academic achievement, their outstanding Christian character, and their significant contribution to the CCU community, they each exemplify the university's strategic priorities which direct our students to change the world for Christ. I ask the following outstanding seniors from the College of Undergraduate Studies to come forward when their names are called. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold your applause until all the students have come forward and are recognized. From the School of Business and Leadership, Kimberly Santaguida. From the School of Education, Alex Rockenstock. From the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Hannah Hare. From the School of Music, Kristen Lester. From the School of Nursing and Health Sciences, Chenua Emily Lin. From the School of Science and Engineering, Sierra Rose. From the School of Theology, Brendan Bollinger. Congratulations to you all. Three students in the College of Undergraduate Studies 
have participated in Colorado Christian University's ROTC program during their years at CCU. Jackson Contreras, Abigail Parker, and Samuel Krauss. Today, Jackson, Abigail, and Samuel will take the officer's oath of office as they commission into the United States military. The United States Army has approximately one million men and women in uniform spread between their active duty, reserves, and National Guard components. Each year, approximately 5,000 Army ROTC cadets commission as second lieutenants. These lieutenants will immediately take on leadership positions. They will lead America's sons and daughters in the roles of prompt land combat, combined arms operations, armored and mechanized operations, airborne and air assault operations, special operations, and military logistics. At this time, I would like to invite Captain Nathan Illis, U.S. Army, along with Samuel Krauss, to the podium for the oath of office. Stand by for a second. So, um, Cadet Krauss, soon to be Second Lieutenant Krauss, is commissioning into the Transportation Corps. He will be attending, his next step will be to attend Transportation Basic Officer Leader Course in Fort Lee, Virginia. And then after that, he will become a platoon leader in a transportation unit and be responsible for the lives of about 40 of America's sons and daughters. And that's a big responsibility. Um, so, Cadet Krauss, soon to be Lieutenant Krauss, good luck. And I can't wait to see and hear all the exciting and powerful things that you're going to do with our military. And then I'll step right around to the front and we'll do your oath. Please be seated. The United States Air Force, including the United States Space Force, created in 2019, has almost 508,000 men and women in uniform spread between active duty, reserves, and National Guard components. Each year, approximately 2,000 Air Force ROTC cadets are commissioned as second lieutenants. These lieutenants will immediately take on leadership positions. They will lead America's sons and daughters in the roles of air supremacy, global integrated intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, and rapid global mobility and global strike. At this time, I would like to invite Captain Ryan Colazzo, U.S. Space Force, along with Jackson Contreras and Abigail Parker to the podium for the oath of office. Good afternoon and thank you to Colorado Christian University for having me here today and for taking a moment to recognize two of our Air Force's future leaders. I've had the opportunity to oversee the final year of Air Force ROTC development for Abigail and Jackson, and both of them have shown the leadership qualities that the Department of the Air Force holds paramount. It's these qualities that they'll carry forward into the active Air Force, with Abigail headed to Vandenberg Space Force Base 
to begin her training as a nuclear and missile operations officer. And Jackson headed to Royal Air Force Base Mildenhall in the United Kingdom to begin his career as a special operations maintenance officer. As they move on in their journey, they'll no doubt continue to make their friends, family, and Detachment 105 proud. Abigail, Jackson, let's do the oath. Thank you, students. Boy, we commend your service. It is now my pleasure to present an honorary do doctorate degree to an individual who exemplifies the ideals of Colorado Christian University. As its highest honor, the Board of Trustees hereby confers an honorary doctorate of humanities degree to Mrs. Carol McVaney for her support of education throughout the state of Colorado. In addition to making a significant difference in numerous ministries focused on young people, such as Save Our Youth, Generate Hope, and Young Life, Carol McVaney has fundamentally shaped the landscape of Christian education for thousands of students. With her philanthropic support and influence, Carol played a pivotal role in the success of several Christian educational institutions. Carol desires that young people in Colorado are afforded the best opportunities to learn, grow, and think for themselves. Through her support of the ACE Scholarship, many dozens of students who would have no choice but to attend a failing school can now afford to attend schools that provide a better fit and quality education. Her support of Denver Street School provides stability, positive role models, and private Christian education to high schoolers who were struggling academically and socially in area public schools and at home. Destined for a life on the streets, Denver Street School rec rescues these students and gives them a second chance. They graduate from high school ready to engage the world and most importantly, knowing Jesus. Carol, Carol was influential in the founding of Valor Christian High School across the street. Valor Christian sets the standard for Christian excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. Students are taught to appreciate the values of Western civilization and the tenets of Christianity. Carol and her late husband, Ed, were great encouragers to our former CCU president, Bill Armstrong, and were instrumental in working with Bill to make CCU a national leader in Christian higher education. She loves this country and supports the efforts of CCU's Centennial Institute, which advocates for our Christian conservative ideals of faith, family, and freedom. She is helping to strengthen today's America and to secure the future of America for our children. She honors Christ and shares his love and blessing with others to impact the world with grace and truth. Carol is a loving humanitarian with a generous and a generous philanthropist. Mrs. McVaney is accompanied by her son, Kevin McVaney, as well as many other family members and friends. Would our special guests of Carol please stand to be recognized?
Therefore, Colorado Christian University is pleased to award the honorary degree of Doctor of Humanities to Mrs. Carol McVaney for her unwavering dedication to education, her commitment to Christian ideals that we hold so dear in America, and for her years of ministry for the cause of Christ and his kingdom. The Honorable Dr. Carol McVaney would like to share a few words. Uh, well, thank you, President. Well, I've got to talk in here, don't You're I? Fine. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, President McTavish, uh, for those kind words. Uh, and to the Board of Trustees, um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, this is a prestigious honor that I would never have even dreamed of getting. Uh, <clears throat> I am very grateful to this outstanding Christian ministry, or university, excuse me, uh, that my late husband, Ed McVaney, and I have believed in and supported over the years. And on a very special uh, personal note, uh, two years ago, uh, our grandson, Josh Fernald, and his lovely wife, Karina, received their undergraduate degrees from CCU. Uh, <clears throat> and lastly, to you graduates, this year's graduates, I wish you all of God's blessings and guidance as you continue in the service of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to God be the glory. Amen, and thank you. <laughs> Following an extensive nine-month nationwide search, the Board of Trustees announced the appointment of Mr. Eric Hogue as president of CCU. Eric has served the university as vice president of university advancement for the past six years. Eric's love for Christian higher education and love for Jesus are contagious, and I am eager to see how God will use him to lead this great university. Please join me in welcoming to the stage CCU's next president, Mr. Eric Hogue. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, President McTavish. You know, the, the story goes that you stand upon the shoulders of those who have gone before you, who God has put in place to do great work. And it's often that we talk about Dr. Beckman, Dr. Donathorne, President Armstrong, Dr. Sweeting. But the most immediate shoulders of which I will stand upon is my colleague, Tim McTavish. I have said this over and over again for you future alums coming up here moments away. I know, it's coming just moments away, that there is no other alumnus that has done as much as this leader has done for his alma mater in the interim period, in the faculty role, with his family and his leadership. I think he is worthy of a standing ovation and a round of applause for his dear. I am honored and humbled and privileged to announce our speaker. Due to an unforeseen circumstance, our previously scheduled speaker, my good friend Sam Rodriguez, could not join us today. In his stead, I have the pleasure of introducing my good friend, brother in Christ, Dr. Don Sweeting, Chancellor of Colorado Christian University. Dr. Sweeting has served as a leader at CCU for nearly seven years first as president of the university beginning in 2016. 
until this past fall when he transitioned to his current role as university chancellor. During his time as president, CCU reached its 13th consecutive year of record enrollment while navigating the global pandemic with more than 9,000 students in the College of Undergraduate Studies and the College of Adult and Graduate Studies and over 7,000 in the CCU Academy, CCU's academic division for high school students. New milestones were achieved in the redevelopment of the Lakewood campus. The Anschutz Student Center was completed. Rockmont Hall was built, and the new Armstrong Center was funded and now under construction. CCU achieved its 10-year reaccreditation, started its first doctoral program, an honors program, created a new school of science and engineering, launched the CCU Academy, and founded the Lee Strobel Center for Evangelism and Applied Apologetics throughout Dr. Sweeting's tenure at this university. I think it's worthy a round of applause of everything that was accomplished. As chancellor, Dr. Sweeting is responsible for amplifying the university's educational mission, convictions, and strategic priorities inside and outside of CCU, promoting Christ-centered higher education and assisting the new president, which may be his hardest job yet. <laughs> Dr. Sweeting holds a degree in Bible theology from Moody Bible Institute, a BA in history from Lawrence University, bachelor's and master's degrees, from Oxford University and a doctorate in church history and historical theology from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. Dr. Sweeting is a noted educator, minister, author, avid reader, and before joining CCU, he served as the president of the Reformed Theological Seminary in Orlando, Florida. As an ordained minister in the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Dr. Sweeting served as senior pastor of Cherry Creek Presbyterian Church in Greenwood Village for 12 years. Please join me in welcoming my mentor, my good friend, and a dedicated servant of Jesus Christ, Dr. Sweeting. Thank you so much, President-elect Hogue, and congratulations, class of 2023. Today, I'm as surprised to be your commencement speaker as some of you are to be graduating today. I realize that. <laughs> But uh, you finished the course, we're proud of you, you did it, and we celebrate your achievement. And uh, as William Buckley once told a graduating class, do not think of me as your commencement speaker, think of me as the last obstacle between you and your degree. <laughs> uh, unlike you, my educational journey was not as efficient as yours. In the first school I went to, uh, I didn't graduate uh, magna cum laude, I didn't graduate summa cum laude, I didn't graduate cum laude, I, I think I just graduated laude, and of course, my parents were deeply praying to the Lord that I would graduate, so, <laughs> so um, I, I didn't graduate with honors, I was just honored to, to graduate. Uh, which reminds me a little bit of something that uh, former President George Bush once said when he was speaking in 2015 to Southern Methodist University. The 43rd President of the United States said this, he said, to those of you who are graduating this afternoon with honors and awards and distinctions, I say well done. And as I like to tell the C students, you can be president as well. <laughs> so take heart, have hope. Well, when our speaker canceled this week, Tim McTavish called me and said, Don, you're on, you have 72 hours. So where do you start? I thought about the um, speaker at Yale University years ago who talked about the importance of Yale. And in his commencement address, he took 10 minutes to talk about the letter Y and what it stood for, and 10 minutes to talk about the letter A and what it stood for, and another 10 to talk about the letter L it stood for. And by the time he got to the letter E, one graduate turned to the next and said, man, I am so glad we did not go to the Massachusetts Institute of Te Technology. <laughs> it would have been an all-day affair. But as you may know, these uh, commencement addresses, there, there's all kinds of trivial advice that is given out during commencement addresses. One thinks of Mary Schmick's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, wear sunscreen speech. These happen. These happen more than you know. Uh, or Admiral William McRaven's amazing, if you want to change the world, make your bed speech. Uh, countless celebrities, even this year, offer their own variants, spouting banalities such as, follow your passion, 
By the way, which isn't a great life philosophy, Mao Zedong was following his passion and it led to a disaster. Or they say, you can be anything you want to be. Actually, you can't really because that's warmed over self-esteem training and you've got to prove your talents when you get on, in the job. And, or they'll say, reach for the stars, save the planet, be true to yourself, seize the day, and on and on it goes. So my aim today is a little more ambitious. I'd like to set before you what I call four next chapter priorities. As you finish one chapter in your life and you begin another. These, I think, uh, I commend to you as your must-dos for the road ahead. So, next chapter, priority number one, be faithful in little things, right where you are. I know you're in a hurry to get on with your dream job and to go to the next level, but like Joseph, who had a dream, you don't realize all that's between where you are now and the dream where God will providentially lead you. But trust Him and be faithful right where you are now. Beware of thinking that any job you have now is beneath you. In fact, I want to give you one more assignment, may I? A little assignment. But go talk to somebody you admire and ask them what were their first seven jobs. You might be surprised how small they were and yet how important. My first job was working on a farm. My, my dad wanted to teach me how to work. And so he said, off you go. This was in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in Amish country. And I spent weeks just picking beans and strawberries and packing the truck for market. And that was my first job. My second job was a janitor, uh, cleaning up in shops, cleaning toilets. My, my third job was um, a store clerk. And you look at people, some that you may admire, and you never think of them in that role, but that's where they started. They had to earn their spurs, pay their dues. So please beware of wanting that big job too soon. Actually, there's a great advantage in serving in a small place and developing habits that will serve you for life. As the prophet Zechariah put it, do not despise the day of small things. And he spoke that to people who are captivated with the big and the bold. The degree that you get, it will most likely open doors. But far more important than your degree is being faithful in little things. Faithful in doing them really, really well. I love the motto of our school of music, which is passionate, passionately pursuing excellence for the glory of God. That's great. I love the motto of the school of business, which is the pioneering witness for Christ in the workplace is competence. And I love the parable of Jesus in Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, about the man who went away and gave his servants one five talent, another two talents, and another one, and then returned. What did they do with it? And to the ones who did well, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. And students, that's the way it works. Be faithful in little things and be ready. Second next chapter priority is this. Be bold in big things. There is a time for boldness and courage, and it is now in this generation. Last week, I happened to be in Jerusalem. I had a fascinating conversation over dinner with an Orthodox Jewish scholar. He talked to me about what's happening in his country and our country, and then he looked at me and he said, Don, why are Christians in America so timid and silent? Why are they afraid to stand for what they believe? Wouldn't they get it that they're to be bold for biblical truth? Now, this is an Orthodox Jew talking to an evangelical um, a university chancellor, and he's admonishing me to be strong in the word. It was, it was a wonderful moment, but we were talking about how our culture squeezes us into a mold so that we... We don't want to admit to things that we believe. Uh, we repeat things that we don't believe, like the one in the womb is not a real baby, or a man can get pregnant, or excessive spending and printing money has no consequence. It sounds like 1984, two plus two equals five, Orwell wrote. And yet we're told by prophets of our own age, like Rod Dreher, echoing Solzhenitsyn, Live not by lies. Stand for the truth. Stand lovingly, winsomely, pick your battles carefully, but let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't be afraid to shrink back.
The temptation is to want to be liked more than anything else. But remember, Jesus said, you will have those who hate you. He predicted it. Winston Churchill is reported to have said, you have enemies? Good. That means you've stood for something in your life. Sometimes we're tempted to avoid all conflict, and we forget that we are now involved in an intense spiritual war where there's a mad rebellion in our culture against the created order. And it was in that kind of an environment where Paul told Timothy, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of me. Fight the good fight. And of course, Jesus said, whoever's ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes. So students, don't hide your light under a bushel. Be faithful in small things, but be bold with big, important things, the issues of our time. But let me give you a third, a third next chapter priority, and that is stay anchored in eternal things. Stay anchored in eternal things, especially as you rise in your career. And by the way, I believe you will rise because I talk to employers in the Denver area and they tell me things like this. We need reliable, hardworking, show up on time, do a day's work for a day's pay. Thou shalt not steal employees and they're getting hard to find. I want to clone your students, one uh, business leader said to me, because they're looking for people just like you. But make sure as you rise, you're anchored in eternal things. Now these days, anchors are despised by many of our contemporaries. People say, oh, they'll tie you down. Right, that's exactly what an anchor does. It ties you down. We desperately need that. My wife, who's not here today, and she couldn't be, but uh, when she was a young girl, her dad worked for the U.S. Geological Survey and was doing diggings in the Gulf of Mexico uh, off the coast of Florida. And one day, uh, he was out in a boat with other geologists, and they were doing their samples, and he told his two daughters, please don't get in a boat, stay out of the water, and I'll be back later. Well, Christina was about eight, and her sister was about 12. What did they do? They got in a boat, they went out in the water, and they, they thought they'd be okay. They threw down the anchor, but the rope and the anchor became unattached. And so they started to drift out into the Gulf. They went out a mile and they started to worry. And by God's mercy, a boat came along and spotted this tiny little rowboat with these two young girls. And my father-in-law happened to be in the boat and he's saying, what on earth are you doing out here? But the, the importance of anchors, we need anchors in eternal things so that we can stand and be effective in this time. You say, well, how do we stay anchored? Simple. Uh, make it a priority to be part of a Bible-believing church and keep the Sabbath so that you're rooted. It was said of Israel, they didn't just keep the Sabbath, the Sabbath kept Israel. How do we stay anchored? Well, make it a habit regularly to read the Bible, to be in God's Word. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Uh, uh, how do we stay anchored? Abide in Christ. We're just a branch. He's the vine who is our life source. How do we stay anchored by gladly embracing constraints on our freedom? You say, well, what do you mean? Well, I mean that freedom's a wonderful thing. We celebrate it in our country, but freedom without constraint undermines everything. Marriages and families and traditions and churches and morals and absolute freedom where everybody does what's right in their own eyes. Why, it's killing us. We find it difficult to marry and stay married and have children and raise them well. We need to be anchored in something that will hold us and keep our souls. So stay anchored in eternal things. Like the psalmist in Psalm 1, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in what? In the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night and he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which brings forth fruit in its season and whatever he does it, it prospers. Not so because the wicked are, they're lightweight like chaff which the wind blows the way. Catch the vision. Next chapter priority number three, stay anchored in eternal things. And finally, Priority number four is resolve always to take the high road. Take the high road. Be faithful in little things. Be bold in big, important things. Stay anchored in eternal things, but take the high road because it's so easy to go with the flow in the workplace, 
to march in time with your peer group, to get sucked into the undertow of negativity in the workplace, to grow cynical and go low. I love how the, the, cho the series The Chosen begins. It begins with this graphic of fish, and they're all going in one direction. And then one fish turns around. Do you remember? You see it in every episode. The fish turns around, and it's going against the flow, and it's hard. But then another joins it, and then another, and then another, and another. And soon, there's a critical force moving against all that cultural flow. There's a message there for us. Resolve to take the high road always. In other words, when others go negative, go positive. When others grouse in the lunchroom, lift their sights. When others gossip and go around people, you go direct to people. When others go mentally lazy, you outread them and outthink them. When others go fat, go lean. When others go crude and trashy in their speech, go clean and clear. When others go sloppy, go sharp. When others cut corners, play by the rules. When they go low, go high. Set the standard at home, in ministry, in the workplace. I close with this story about the pilot and the rat. Maybe you've heard it, maybe not, but it was about a jet pilot who was testing a plane and he got up to a low altitude. And as he was at that cruising altitude, he heard this strange sound in his cockpit and it sounded like a, a gnawing sound. And he looked down and to his horror, he saw a rat in the cockpit, cockpit that had somehow got in there and the rat happened to be chewing on the main electrical wire between the jet's control and the engine. And if it cut the line, of course, the plane would go down. And so the pilot panicked. He thought, what do I do? First, his instinct was to go down and try to grab it and chase the rat, but he couldn't do that. That wouldn't work in flying the plane. There was no place to land. And so he said the only thing he could do was ascend. He put on his oxygen mask, boosted the power, and immediately climbed as high as he could. And as he got altitude, the thing that happened was the rat just toppled over, toppled over because the high altitude took care of the problem. He went high. And I want to tell you the temptation to go low is great to join the rats, to be dishonest, to be jealous, spiteful, revengeful, to retaliate, to cut corners, to cheat, to toy with the truth. But there's a better way. And God's word tells us about that. Micah 6, 8. You know what pleases the Lord? You do what is right. You love kindness and you walk humbly with your God. Take the high road. So class of 2023, as you look from this mountaintop today to the vistas ahead and the peaks that you're going to go, to get there, you're going to need some serious next chapter priorities. And here are four. Be faithful in little things and be ready. Be bold in big and important things. Stay anchored in eternal things. And always, always take the high road. And yes, wear sunscreen and uh, um, make your bed every day. But um, you have so much to give. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace and success and prosperity to serve him and have a great impact for the kingdom of God in the days ahead. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Chancellor Sweeting. 72 hours. You can just pull that stuff out. That's amazing. <laughs> Faithful, bold, anchored, and resolved. Uh, Don's one who, who practices what he preaches too. Thank you for your leadership. Chancellor Sweeting. Well, this is the moment for which we have all been waiting. We are ready to present and confer the degrees upon our candidates for graduation. Candidates receiving degrees this afternoon will be announced by the deans of their respective program and schools, now shown on your screen. Mrs. Teresa Woodburn, Dean of the CCU Academy. Dr. Peter Kerr, Dean of the School of Business and Leadership. Dr. Deborah Scheffel, Dean of the School of Education. Doc, Dr. Gary Stewart, Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Mr. Stephen Taylor, Dean of the School of Music. Dr. Barbara White, Dean of the School of Nursing and Health Professions. 
Dr. Mark Parker, Dean of the School of Science and Engineering, and, and Dr. David Cotter, Dean of the School of Theology. Uh, as the deans move into place and our candidates walk across the stage, I'd like to invite Jordan Olivero to come to deliver the alumni charge. Jordan is a 2005 alumnus of Colorado Christian University, having graduated summa cum laude in 2005 with a degree in business administration, a minor in leadership, and spe specializations in biblical studies, management, and Spanish. Jordan is currently serving as the Senior Vice President of Client Experience at Cirrus Secure. Jordan, will you please do the honors of inducting these candidates into the CCU Alumni Association? Thank you, President McTavish. Graduates, as you walk across the stage this afternoon, you will now be confirmed to the world at large as alumni of Colorado Christian University. She will be your alma mater, a Latin phrase that means your nourishing mother, and you her cherished sons and daughters. You, you entered her halls as prospective students, and today you will leave as alumni. Congratulations. Today is not an ending, but rather a celebration a continuation of your lifelong relationship with CCU. Today is your full initiation into the fellowship of the university as a bearer of grace and truth and as a faithful servant of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The university is not the campus. It's not the buildings on the campus, not a line on your resume, and not a piece of paper. The university is all of us, and it is you. You are her ambassadors, and you will carry her influence and knowledge wherever you go to impact the world in your callings. Today you will join me and nearly 24,000 CCU alumni around the world as lifetime members in the Colorado Christian University Alumni Association. I invite you to tenderly tend to this relationship as you go along your life's journey, visiting our website, following us on social media, and coming to our events know that you'll always have a place at our table of fellowship. So as I close, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Above all, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Congratulations, alumni. President McTavish, Mrs. Teresa Woodburn, the Dean of the CCU Academy, was not able to be with us this afternoon, so it is my privilege to announce her candidates. While still in high school, the following students have completed the requirements for an associate's degree from the university's dual enro enrollment academic division. Colorado Christian University CCU Academy is proud to award an Associate of Arts in Liberal Arts to the following students. Anna Orstrom Sandgren. Zachary W. Johnston. Anna Faith Moon. Amaria Scott. Richard William Stanton. You're good. Reston E. Stanton. President McTavish, the following students have completed the requirement for a bachelor's degree from the College of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Business and Leadership. Kimberly Santaguida. Yeah. 
Peter Schleicher. Jackson Contreras. John Ames. Grant Thomas Roloff. Garrett W. Johnson. Luke Meyer. Jacob Vermillion. Trenton Cochran. Tucker Allen Skoma. Zachary Romeo Mercier. Miguel Comenesas Calvinho da Fonseco. Bodie Mitchell Flores. Emma Michelle Wright. Chloe Warren. McKay W. Brown. Joshua S. Phillips. Soren David Hoyen. Dylan Hughes. J. Newell Johnston the Fourth. Curtis H. Clemens. Nathaniel David Holmes. Anthony Mengua Mamburu. Nicholas Zile. Nicholas D. Crandall. Ramsey E. Kilgore. Hunter James Kirby. Noah S. Brown. Cody Kitzmiller. Christina Kroger. Rachel L. Habus. Alan W. Harley. Jenna Whaley. Carissa Ray Whaley. Adriana Leigh McEwen. Emily Grace Carroll. Cole Howling. Brandon Scott Rich. Austin J. Anderson. Joshua Probosco.
Nolan Christopher Rogers. Camden Brennan Binkovich. Gabriel Caleb Vigil. Cody James Oldeen. Julia Aaron Chapa. Miguel Angel Peña Balderas. Aaron Ballard. Cynthia Lynn Martin. Jamie Grace McNally. Angela Bailey Neeland. Kaylee Jakin Mashburn. Joellen Trezais. Kwa Wen. Nick Nordstug. Sarah D. McPeak. Nicholas J. Jelderks. Luke Trinkle. Kaylin Marie Modelmog. David Paul Wilhelm. Elena M. Sheffer. Elena Grace Hires. Jessica D. Benson. Megan Elise Laveau. Lillian Marie McLean. Adeline Grace Katayama. Allison Ann Wilson. Megan O'Malley. Ethan G. Valley. Justine E. Scott. Delena Griffin. President McTavish, the following students have completed the requirements for a bachelor's degree from the College of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Education. Alex R. Rockenstock. Cassidy Elmer. Trinity Jean Taraba. Kevin Michael Omela. Samantha Engel. Christina Grace Nolan. 
Gabriel H. Chong. Rachel Ann Wittick. Kena Monroe. Raina Monroe. <laughs> and Camila Joy Chisholm. Ellie Lynn Hunt. Amory Erskine. Riley Neville. Destiny Marie Crowder. Abigail Hoppus. Emma Christina Johnson. Ramona Lamaster. Megan C. Wardrop. Jade Virginia Weaver. Justin T. Sanchez. Nicole Faith Poe. Danielle Ann Toriello. Madeline Yawn. Rebecca Schumacher. Anna Lee N. Lawton. Cheyenne Rose Brown. Emmeline Anna Shart. Emily R. Doden. Carolyn R. Canelli. Christina Tucker. Ran Abbott. Savannah DeBoer. Alexis Bryn Weedman. Caitlin Brooke Heaston. Cassie M. Freed. Sarah Elena Shoulders. President McTavish, the following students have completed the requirements for a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree from the College of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Hannah Grace Hare. Samuel P. Kraus. Abigail Parker. Sydney Isabel Terrell. Casey Grace Rance.
Nicole Dream Chavez. Jodea J. Mills. Samuel Michael Anunziato. Lillian G. Fouts. Elizabeth M. Geck. Mia Angelica Pankratov. Kendra Stone. Lucas Emmons. Taryn Klein. Isabella Cho. Noah Gregory Kurd. Shelby Elizabeth Jackson. Taylor Lindsay Shirk. Natalie Evelyn Grassi. Tarek DeBoer. Mitchell Morgan Adams. Michaela Smoker. Megan Rain Thompson. Remington W. Brock. Kenneth A. Lane the Fourth, Ethan Robert Moore, Haley Hoskins, Katrina Carmichael, Karina. Marie Constancio. Corinna Joy Brockelman. Molly Joy Miller. Elizabeth L. Barker. Callie Elizabeth Kettner. Marcella Lynn Evans. Emily Nicole Joyner. Molly Robinson. Jacob T. Abenshan. Sierra Martinez. McKenna Coleman. Vitalik Alexander Wally. Pearson Paul Gardner. Nate Steele. Max Peter Christopher Collingwood. Kinley Dawn Sanders. Aloria Lambert. Phoebe Lynn McKenney. Yeah! 
Sage Priscilla Stock. Brianna Lynn Doran. Abigail Grace McGargill. Brevin Jones. William James Bourne. Matthew J. Bootsma. Laura McTavish. Jenna Faith Matthews. Sage Lene Eileen Landry. Elena Angelina Mungia. Annika Elise Heyman. Grace Ann Brandt. <laughs> Mackenzie Ann Hancock. Ashton Noble Pullen. Kylie Catherine Barth. Jordan Maxwell Brown. Saliana Jubilee Lily Gallegos. Paz de Dios Carmona Savala. McKenna Grace Kluzak. Macy Ann Esper. <laughs> Olivia Rose Gaines. <laughs> Emma Christine Browning. Margaret Louise Copeland. Mariah K. Hart. Eva Elizabeth Folsom. Emma Rose Calmes. Kayla Krausick. David Shager. Gabriel Joel Roby. Madison Greer. Brooks Daniel Upham. Ethan James Twibel. Brooke Hannah Selby. Vanessa Maria Ball.
Bethany Wilmeth. Cassandra Marie Guerra. Marissa Alejandra Archuleta. Julia Carabel Campbell. Tara Noel Gardner. Daryl Lynn McDonald, Jr. Madeline Lee Sanders. Annika Grace Weens. Grace Elizabeth Turley. President Matavish, the following students have completed the requirements for a bachelor's degree from the College of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Music. Kristen Lester. Kyla Corin Moore. Abigail Faith Woodford. Jonathan Robert Pine. Brianna Joy Bettis. Ashley Elizabeth Bird. Brandon Christopher King. Diana Marshall McCoy. Elena Cherie Hummel. Gabriel M. Lambrecht. Maxwell David White. Sarah H. Bergman. Thank you. President McTavish, the following students have completed the requirements for a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree from the College of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Nursing and Health Professions. Chen Yu Emily Lin. Kelsey Elise Hovey. Taryn Kapowitz. Marcus Anthony Kalasuno. Eden Elaine Higginbottom. Yeah. Isabella Grace Dinglesan. Yeah. Alexandria Erica Johnston. Kaylee Warner. Yes, 
Molly Catherine Vesterby. Jordan Powell. Kayla Bryn Powell. Janae Christine Speak. Emma Marie Maddox. Anita Page Moore. Caden Matthew Obrecht. Alexis Michelle Weekly. Hannah Rose Immel. Allison Shane Wall. Winnie Spurlock. Esther Tweedwin. Lauren Elizabeth Gonzalez. Leanna May Bowling. President McTavish, the following students have completed the requirements for a bachelor's degree from the College of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Science and Engineering. Sierra, Cheney, Angelica, Faith, Rose. Jensen M. Lavo. Elizabeth Lucille Matson. Katja C. Chavez. Maya Faith Ethorn. Sydney Pretty. Michaela Brooke Robertson. Catherine Ray Farhart. Megan Pitton. Kate Ryan Stambuck. Jessica L. Gillantine. Jarrett Duft. Jacob John Gowrup. Royden Pankratov. (laughs) 
James Nicholas Michael. Kaylee M. Gout. Madison Ray Croner. Hannah J. Rockwell. Kylie Rose Smithwick. Moriah Lansing. Brittany Ann Lobato. Felix Sin Shaniago. Kenton Lee Hunter Mose. Cameron Mason Varney. Grayson Daly Bauman. Asia Yannick Gatewood. Sienna Marie Potter. Larissa Carol Thorpe. Mia Mackenzie Sautel. Grace Marie Connell. Lauren Michaela Kim. Daria Nichols. Shannon Fleagle. Katrina Joanne Hughes. Aislinn Faith Warmka. Kaylee M. Jaquette. Zachary Medina. Tyler Bradley. William Bateman. Evan P. Lundberg. Madison Jewel Walker. Benjamin Timothy Johnson. Cameron T. Hoff. Jed M. Erickson. Ah! 
Marta Lynn Hansen. Sydney Hunter. Ellie Klotz. Caitlin Ann Hogan. Hannah Rain Fur. Andy Peterson. Abigail D. Lopez. Adam Martin Johnson. Donald Francis Shern III. Harrison Scott Nation. Yeah. President McTavish, the following students have completed the requirements for a bachelor's degree from the College of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Theology. Brendan Mills Bollinger. <laughs> Megan Gunner. <laughs> Elisa Marie Hernandez. <laughs> Hannah M. Pip. Rachel Marie Reitz. Samuel W. Bell. Cody London Hawley. Joel Abraham Matthew. Toby O. Watson. Trent David Landenberger. Grace Joanna Lilly. Jenea E. Folk. Claire Peterson. Yeah. Janessa Ruth Sablan. <laughs> Philip James Miller. Yeah. Jaden Purcell. Yeah. Will our bachelor's degree and associate's degree candidates please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State of Colorado and the Board of Trustees of Colorado Christian University, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the degrees of Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, 
Bachelor of Science, with all the rights, privileges, and honors attending thereto. Graduates, you may now move your tassels to the left. Congratulations, graduates. It is my honor to present to you the 2023 graduating class of Colorado Christian University. And President-elect Hogue, will you please come forward for some closing comments? Oh, we like the cheers. Give yourselves a round of applause one more time. What a great afternoon. A couple of housekeeping notes before we close. Ladies and gentlemen, when the graduates begin to leave the worship center, we are asking that our guests remain seated. If you are a friend or family member here today, please remain in your seat until all the graduates have left and exited the worship center. Graduates, as you continue your celebration today, this week, this month, this year, the next decade, whatever it may be, we invite you to view your virtual commencement announcement slide. You may share this slide on social media, also download a copy of the keepsake. I'm thinking that later on today, you could probably grab your picture, Photoshop it, and have one more post on Instagram on a sweet meme. You get one more shot. Please join me in thanking the University Symphonic Band and the University Choir for providing such beautiful music today. Thank you. About a round of applause for this amazing roster of faculty at CCU. Graduates, again, I congratulate you and wish for you the richest blessings from God our Father, from His Son, Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit. And I challenge you, encourage you, to walk with Jesus every day of your life. Stay close to your family. Always remember Colorado Christian University. We do want to see you often and hear of your great accomplishments. You are very dear to us. And we will thank God always in our remembrance of you. Our recessional hymn is the Battle Hymn of the Republic, followed by God Our Fathers. And now, Board of Trustee member, good friend of mine, would you please welcome Dr. Jerry Nelson to the podium to close us in prayer. Gentlemen, will you please remove your hats? There can be no more fitting ending to an event such as this than to hear God himself pronounce his benediction, his blessing on us. Hear now the word of the Lord from the Bible, book of Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, May he equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>